and of course it's inspire sports academy okay All right, Sports Coaching 101. So I, I just named it 101 because it's basically the basics of sports coaching. It doesn't have to be specific to basketball, no? It's applicable to all forms of sports coaching. As we all know, coaching is also teaching and there's corporate coaching. But at least for today's discussion, we're going to focus on sports coaching. Okay, uh, recently there was a talk also by Coach Potet about the what is a coach and i think this is very good as a supplement supplementary uh information or tool uh as well for for coaches out there okay so i'm gonna break this down into three uh sub parts okay so first is the definition of what the coach is the second is the role of coaches and finally, understanding the importance of a coach. Okay. So what is coaching? When we define coaching, okay, uh, there are a lot of definitions out there, no? So this is the definition that really stuck out for me. So coaching is a form of development in which a person called the coach supports a learner or client in achieving a specific personal or professional goal by providing training and guidance. So this is from Jonathan Passmore. So in this statement, there are three key words for me that stuck out. So the first one is development. When we coach in any sport, again, it is important that we develop. Okay? Ah, hindi pwede yung magka-coach ka tapos mag-regress mag pa yung athletes natin. So this is a minimum. We have to develop. And ideally, when we coach, we, we want to achieve something. Okay, we want to achieve something. The ultimate goal for, for some is winning, winning a championship. But that is not just the goal. Okay? And we provide. We provide something. We provide our expertise. We provide guidance. Okay, especially for the youth coaches out there. It is important to lay the foundations, okay, to lay the foundation to these athletes that they will carry on as they progress in their careers. Okay, next. So, again, we try to define coaches. I have here two images that I feel is the perception of coaches. It's how other people see coaches. So, the first one is this. Okay, a coach is someone who yells at you for not run, or running fast enough. So the image is pretty funny, diba? We see some, a coach who's out of shape yelling at somebody to run. Uh, I guess this is very applicable to coaches nowadays. Maybe it is to me. Okay, but then again, we have to understand the point of view of this coach. Why is, why is he shouting at someone? Is it shouting or teaching? Okay, but in terms of perception, in terms of how other people see us, maybe this is one. The second image is this. Diba, coaches? Ito, madaming memes na ganito, eh, diba? What my friends think I do, what my mom thinks I do, etc., etc. And there are different images uh, of coaches and the perception of people to us. So, iba, iniisip lagi lang tayong nananalo ng championship. Iba, it's always coaches being temperamental, Coaches on the drawing board, always drawing out plays and everything. So these are all true, I guess. Yet, okay, we want to discuss this further because there's more to coaching than just this. Okay? So now we go into the coaching roles. Uh, there are a lot, okay? But first, we go to the three stages of coach to athlete training. Again, we're dealing with athletes as coaches. Okay? It applies to all sports, whether it is tennis, basketball, football, a team sport, or an individual sport. So the first, first stage is the cognitive stage. Okay, so what is the cognitive stage? Uh, it is when an athlete first starts a sport event. 
So usually these are the youth coach, youth uh, athletes. Okay, mga bata. Okay, they just begin. So it's the, the, the approach to these athletes will be different. Okay, the second is the associative stage. So in this stage, the athlete develops and demonstrates a sound technical understanding of the sport already. Okay, so the, the assumption here is he progressed already from the cognitive and associative stage. And finally, the autonomous stage. Okay, it is where the athlete matures and demonstrates a sound understanding of training principles. So why is this important? Because you will tailor fit the program that you will have depending on the stages of your athletes. This is very important. Okay, uh, some coaches here, or maybe a lot, deal with different stages of uh, athletes in their coaching careers simultaneously. Diba? Minsan coach ka ng isang college team and yet you also coach a youth team. So the approach must be different. Hindi pwedeng yung, yung ina-apply mong approach dito sa, sa mga young adults or collegiate players or even pro athletes. Hindi pwedeng pareho dun sa cognitive stage of athletes. Uh, there will be similarities, of course. Yet, there should be differences as well. Okay? So to sum this up, I just have a, an image here from Fitz and Posner. So again, the cognitive or beginner or novice stage, the associative or intermediate or practice, and autonomous, yung advanced na advanced or fine-tuning stage. Again, uh, we have to identify the differences. We've seen coaches who are very successful in a particular level, let's say the youth or... Uh, pro level for that matter, and yet are not as successful uh, in other levels. So, baka ang nangyayari doon, hindi nila nababago yung form of teaching nila. Okay, so we just have to check ourselves. We have to adapt. We have to adapt. Okay, next. For me, okay, and other coaches will have uh, different takes on this, but at least for me, there are minimum coaching competencies needed. Okay, there could be a lot. I just uh, singled out six competencies. Okay, the minimum competencies. You can have 10 or 20, okay? Pero for me, as long as you have these six, okay, you will be fine. You will be okay. Okay, the first one is organizing, okay? You have to organize everything, okay? The training session, the equipment that you will have, uh, the area, di ba nangyayari minsan? It has happened to me a couple of times, may ensayo tayo, walang mga bola. Di ba? So these are, kumbaga, uh, again, non-negotiables. Everything should be set. Okay? Ensuring safety, very important. Providing instruction and explanation. Demonstration. Observing and analyzing and giving feedback. Okay, so for, for me, these are the six non-negotiables. Uh, I will not, we will not dwell with the X's and O's here. Okay, we leave it up to the expert coaches, sila Coach Nash, sa kanila na yan. Okay, but these are the competencies needed, okay, to fulfill your role as a coach. Okay, again, it doesn't matter what sport. It can be an individual sport. It can be a team sport. And these are all applicable. Okay? So let's deep, deep dive into each of the competencies that we need. Organization. Okay? Again, do your homework. Okay? It doesn't matter whether uh, it's practice, it's game. It's very important that you always do your homework. Kung ano man yung role mo sa team, okay, whether you're an, a, a head coach, you're an assistant coach, usually uh, there's division of labor. So you just do what you're supposed to do at the minimum. At the minimum. If you want to do more than that, better. Okay? Because 
failing to plan is planning to fail. Okay, this is in a nutshell. Okay, the summary of doing doing your homework. Uh, it doesn't just apply in coaching, I guess. Diba? In school, in, in, in your corporate roles, as a family man, as a family member. Okay? If you fail to plan, we plan to fail. Okay, so very important. Means and we take these things um, for granted. Okay, pero ako, through experience and through the years, uh, I've been in both sides of the coin. Okay, both prepared and not prepared and there's a world of difference and trust me as long as you prepare you do your homework you will be okay okay next safety risk assessment again something that we take for granted i believe all coaches all uh, doesn't matter what age level you coach what team you coach should practice basic first aid or should know basic first aid. Okay? We do not know. Uh, in, uh, there will be instances wherein uh, there will be an emergency. Sana wag mangyari. Pero minsan nangyayari yan eh. It can happen to our players. It can happen to our coaches. It can happen to the custodians around us. So I think, I don't know kasi if this is being practiced already in all organizations, but safety is very important, at least basic first aid. Okay? Uh, of course, at least in the collegiate or pro teams, may kasama na silang, usually may kasama ng uh, assistant coach who's, who deals with the health issues of the players. But for the other levels or for other organizations, it's very important. Okay, so we should coach with care. Okay, we should coach with care. We never know. I hope it doesn't happen, but we never know. There might be instances where an emergency will arise and we'll need basic first aid from us coaches. Okay. Okay, next. Instruction and explanation. Okay. In providing instruction and explanation, you should think about the plan of what you are going to say, okay, to, to gain the athlete's attention and ensure that they can all hear you. A lot of times, uh, as coaches, diba, we shout out instructions, apparently instructions, and we get mad because hindi nasusunod yung mga instructions na yun. Posibleng hindi narinig or posibleng hindi naintindihan. Alam mo naman yung mga bata minsan, diba? When you tell them something, oo lang ng oo yung mga yan. Di ba? Para lang matapos. Even us sometimes, di ba? When, when our parents talk to us, just so to end the conversation, we just say yes. But in truth, we do not understand anything. So it's very important that we explain. Okay? So, kung kailangan ganyan, we have to explain explain our instructions as, as is. Diba? Okay. Next. Demonstration. Uh, so it's very important that we get the message across for our athletes to hear what we want to happen. But some are very visual. They have to see for them to understand. So this is where demonstration uh, comes into play. Okay? If we as coaches can demonstrate a particular drill or show the play, that would be good. Medyo siguro minsan matatawa sila dahil out of shape na tayo, hindi na tayo makatalon, but they will appreciate the effort. If we cannot do it ourselves, we can ask the help of our assistant coaches, or even some of the players, but we have to demonstrate. Okay? It's different. I mean, knowing what to do in theory, kasi na-explain mo, nasabi mo na ganito dapat ang gagawin. Knowing what to do in theory is good. Okay? But the application is just as important. So ipakita natin. I mean, 
ang dami na naming nakakatawang ganito dahil as coaches, di ba, papakita namin yung gagawin, minsan madadapa ka, o minsan pagtira mo, libre. Tapos, uh, I mean, it's part, of, it's part of coaching. Okay, these are humorous situations wherein uh, I'm sure the players will appreciate our efforts. Okay, next. Observation and analysis. Okay? So, again, di ba? We observe our team. We observe our athletes. Sometimes we have video recordings, which is very good. Kasi when we show our athletes uh, a video clip of something he did wrong or something he did right, wala na siyang masasabi because the video doesn't lie. And it's very important, guys, when you observe, you have to give both positive and negative feedback. Wag lang yung puro negative. Negative feedbacks are good as long as they are constructive. Anong ibig sabihin ng constructive? Sana yung feedback natin na yon makatulong sa pag-improve ng bata, sa pag-improve ng athletes natin. Okay? And we analyze. So ngayon, nagbigay tayo ng positive or negative feedback. Ano yung next step natin? Di ba? We, we usually, we call out, we call out the, our, our athletes, we talk to them. O oh, ito yung maling ginawa mo. Ito yung kailangan mong baguhin. Ito yung kailangan mong gawin para hindi ka na magkamali. And it's a continuous process, guys. It doesn't happen overnight. Even the best of the best, when you watch uh, elite sports, di ba? Sometimes we see athletes make the same mistake. So, proseso siya. Proseso siya. So, we should never stop. Okay, and finally, for the coaching role, it's giving feedback. It's very simple. Okay, very important. Yet, sometimes we take it for granted. Okay, bigyan mo ng feedback. Hindi pwedeng yung dead ka lang the whole time because a player might be doing something wrong which he thinks is right dahil wala namang sinasabi si coach eh. So itutuloy ko lang. Yun pala, hindi yun yung gusto mong ginagawa niya. Okay, so sometimes hindi rin pwedeng we assume. Okay? We just can't assume that ah, eventually he will learn it because sometimes he won't. Ang problema dyan, tatanda yung player or magpo-progress yung player without even correcting the mistake. Because of us. Because we did not give proper feedback. Okay? Okay, next. On the third uh, sub, subplot of uh, coaching, uh, the coaching role, it's understanding the importance of coaches. Again, just to remind you, these are just basics. No? Uh, we won't dwell on the specifics, on the systems, on the X's and O's. I assure you, as long as you have these competencies, you will be fine. You will be fine. Okay. The first one is focus on improving the team as a whole. Of course, if it's, especially if it's a team uh, sport, it will be composed of individuals. Diba? Mahalaga, of course, you improve the individual skills of each with the end goal of focusing the team as a whole. So the basic, the basic foundation of a coach is to improve the skill level of his or her players. But the focus is to improve the team as a whole by maximizing their full potential. And the skill level, uh, let's say you, you, you handle a team sport, the skill level of the team of the individuals will vary. I'm sure you're, you, I mean, you know this, di ba? Ang importante lang, bawat player sana maabot yung full potential nila. Okay, and as coaches, we will know it. Eh. We will see the effort. Okay? So to further explain this, okay, we have uh, a guest coach here, Coach Nash Rosella, on what the role of a coach is.
Okay, so thank you, Coach Nash. Uh, diba? It's just to develop the uh, full potential Coach of the Jay, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Coach, I'm sorry. Um, could you repeat the video? Kasi walang audio yung... Uh, may audio ba yung, yung pinakita mo? Meron, Kasi meron, Kasi walang audio yung lumabas. Oh. Uh, you have to, I think, click something sa share screen button. May option doon to maximize the sharing uh, experience yata with the audio. Tingnan natin. I, I took out the... Ano, may, ear, may earphones. The role of a coach is to help their athletes develop... Okay na. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so yan, to develop the full, their full potential. That is, for Coach Nash, the role of a coach. Uh, I asked them to give me a one-liner of what the role of a coach is. And dami niyan. And dami niyan. Pero for Coach Nash, I guess one of the most important roles is to develop their full potential. Okay? Uh, again, it will vary. It will be different. And you will know. Once you develop the full potential of, of your athletes, you will know that you achieved your goal. Okay? Uh, so next. Coaching is more than just X's and O's. Okay. X's and O's, ano yan eh? uh, it's very important. It's very, very important. Kung anong sistema ang tatakbohin mo, di ba? You want to maximize the full potential of your athletes depending on what the opponents can give you. For example, for basketball, if you have a very good center, syempre, yung maximize mo. Okay, but it's just, it's more than that. It's more than that. So, it's far more than simply organizing practices and managing games. Again, importante yan, kasama yan, pero hindi lang yan ang pagiging coach. Okay? Diba, when, when we when we watch sports on TV, kapag umabot na sa do or die matches, let's say the finals of Wimbledon or Game 7 of an NBA Finals, sinasabi nila, hindi na siya X's and O's eh, di ba? Because everybody knows, what's, uh, everybody knows what, the other, what, what the other opponent or the other team will, will do eh. Okay? So siguro ito yung mga, ito yung mga roles ng coaches that really uh, exemplify these characteristics. Coaching fill a variety of roles in their players' lives acting as everything from mentor to role model to parent. Okay? Uh, I was watching uh, a webinar the other day. Uh, there was a guest coach. And he was saying that he really took time to bond with his players outside of practices and games. Diba? You, 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 you invite them to, to eat out. Hindi naman kailangan mamahalin kahit mga fast food lang. Or you give them a ride going home. Diba? We watch movies na sinasakay yung ng, ng, ng coach yung player na naglalakad lang or nagko-commute. And these are all valuable. These are all valuable. Relationships outside the playing field, outside the court, outside the football pitch. Okay, really matter. So to uh, help us further understand this, we have another champion coach here, Coach Leo Austria, on his take uh, as a coach. I thought the audio really is not as good. Uh, medyo mahina talaga yung recording. Parang nahiya yata si Coach Leo dito eh. Pero, okay. Okay. So according to Coach Leo, the most important role of a coach is to be like a father figure to your players. For you to be understood, you should understand them first. Ayan, di ba? Coach Leo, ilan, ilan na bang championship nito sa San Miguel? Eight yata. So the proof is in the pudding. Uh, with San Miguel, di ba? I mean, he's dealing with superstars who have different egos. So ang naging approach ni Coach Leo doon, okay, Intindihin ko muna yung mga pangangailangan ng bawat players ko. By doing so, 
they will understand what I want from them. Okay, so I guess it was effective, but they won eight championships. Okay, and it's not it's not easy, even if you're dealing with superstars. Maybe the say, we can say the same with uh, Phil Jackson. Diba? I'm sure a lot of you have seen The Last Dance. The way he handled Dennis Rodman. Diba? As a coach, sa tingin mo, magagawa mo ba yun? In the middle of a final series, magre-wrestling. Diba? It's, it's different. It's a different approach. But he understood this player. Eh? And, and, and in return, the player gave what the coach wanted. So we, it's like being a father to them. Diba? It's like being a, being a father to them. Okay. So next, uh, develop synergies within your team. A lot, have, a lot has been said with teams who really have fun. Diba? Uh, case in point, siguro yung in basketball, uh, the Golden State Warriors who have been very consistent for the last five years. And we see them having fun. We see them really uh, collectively bond and enjoy, enjoy themselves together as a team. Okay, so this is very important to the success of your team. One of the hallmarks of a well-coached team is that the team's performance is far greater than the sum of its parts. Of course, in a team sport, okay, there will be different parts. Okay, there will be different parts. And it's very important that we correct selfish players. Okay, we always deal with this. Eh. Uh, in a team, minsan makikita mo skill level of the magagaling yung team, magaling yung players, the skill level is high. But you will sometimes identify or notice one or two players who are selfish, who just want personal gain. I don't care if we win or lose as long as I get my triple-double every time. So this case is different from an individual sport, a team sport, wherein you have to share the ball, wherein you have to pass the ball. Coaches should motivate their players to play together and bring out the best in their players to play as a cohesive unit, putting the good of the team above individual goals. It is easier said than done. Sometimes they have to see the result first before they, we get their buy-in. Eh? Okay, and we know, diba? if we ask, if I ask you now, we can identify players in any, in, in multiple sports in different countries who are really good, but were not successful because they were selfish. Okay, so especially in a team sport, the, the goal of the team should be the priority, not your individual. Again, coaches will train us individually. Skill level, I use it individually. But the team goal is uh, the most important. Okay, so we have here uh, Coach Eric Gonzalez. Okay, on his take. Wait, huh? Sorry. A coach should know how to lead, inspire, and bring out the best out of his uh, players and team. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Coach, coach E. Okay. So, we have to lead, inspire, and bring out the best out of our players. Okay. When we say the best, it's not just the individual skill of the player. Siguro, it's, it's the best attitude. It's the best character. So the term best is not just his skill level in that particular sport. Lahat-lahat na yan. Diba? Attitude, character ng bata, yung uh, motivation ng bata. So it's all rolled into one. Okay? So we have to, kailangan natin ma-extract sa mga bata ito. Again, it varies. Siguro nga, it's better when we, are, when we deal with uh, the youth. Kasi wala pa masyadong pinagdadaan ng mga coaches ito. When we deal with uh, teeners or collegiate athletes or even pro athletes, di ba sometimes we have to correct, okay, we have to correct 
what they have been doing for the longest time or their attitude for the longest time. Again, it can happen. It can happen. Although it won't be easy. So it's, it's very important as well that we become patient. Patience is really a virtue when we coach. Okay. Know your players. Yung background ng bata ng mga players natin, kailangan natin malaman din. Okay. It's, it's really diving into the relationship with your athlete. To be a good coach, you must understand how to manage individuals on our team. Okay. So kailangan natin yung bawat isa. Okay. So kailangan natin yung bawat isa. Uh, sometimes we fall into the trap wherein we really play favoritisms, especially with our star players. Diba? Siyempre, when we win, uh, we get noticed, we are praised, and at the back of our heads, we know that we, we won because of this particular person on the team. That's okay. We recognize. But, Okay, we should treat each one equally as much as possible. Okay, so understand each individual on the team. A coach is a mentor, diba? We always hear this word. Make sure you direct them down the appropriate path by correcting their mistakes. Uh, I've, I've, since I've been coaching for the last, I think, 21 years, I have athletes... Uh, who are already doctors, who are already lawyers, and kahit pa paano rin siguro, okay, by correcting some of the mistakes as athletes they did in the past, maybe in a way it helped them, okay, to really be, uh, really be what they are now, to, to be successful. So we have Coach Ronnie Magsanok here, on his take on the role of a coach. My name is Coach Ronnie Magsanok. Basketball coach should be able to lead the team's players. The basketball coach must have the ability to lead the player's players. When he may coach the basketball, he also must have the capacity to lead the player's players. Okay, thank you, Coach Ronnie. So just, I'm just going to read it again. A basketball coach should be able to protect his players. So protect. A basketball coach must have the ability to correct his players. And finally, a coach in basketball should also have that capacity to direct. So three big words from Coach Ronnie. Uh, correct. Okay. Protect. And direct. So, kumbaga, the way we treat the players now, diba? it will really... Uh, be beneficial to them even if they are not our athletes anymore. Diba? The life of an athlete usually uh, by around 30, 35, hitting 40 years old, medyo being competitive, mawawala na sa kanila. Eh, diba? And yet, they're just kumbaga, half of what they're gonna live, uh, half of their full lifetime pa lang yun. So there's more to sports after they retire. There's really more to sports after you retire. Wala pa sa kalahati ng buhay mo yun, or maybe half. So as long as we protect them while we have them, we correct their mistakes, and eventually we direct them to what is right. Okay, even long after they have, they are uh, players under our team they will still imbibe these characteristics in their daily lives or in their profession, uh, professional lives. So thank you very much, Coach Ronnie. Okay, uh, teach good exercise habits. Ito, uh, simple lang to eh. Sports is hard work. It doesn't matter regardless of the sport. Diba? Kasi sometimes you always just think of the popular sports. Eh? Basketball, volleyball. Uh, football. Ito, nakikita natin, it's really hard work. Because aside from the physical, the ba, you undergo training. There's a lot of mental aspect also happening. You have to be able to comprehend what you're supposed to do. So, hindi siya madali. Diba? We hear coaches, unfortunately, sometimes, 
we hear coaches saying, ang galing ng bata, pero hindi niya ma-pick up yung gagawin. Eh. This is okay, it happens. Anong kailangan natin gawin as coaches din? Diba? Ulit-ulitin lang, ulit-ulitin. Diba? Whether mental or physical. Let's say, may player tayong matangkad, pero nahirapang kumuha ng rebound. So, we have to have uh, prepare them with drills that will really improve their weaknesses. The discipline brought about by healthy living will benefit their athletes for years to come. Again, sports uh, competitively will only be half your lifetime. After which, diba, we will be on our own as professionals, as businessmen. Diba? Ang idol ko dito, si, siguro si ano, Senator Freddie Webb. Diba? Uh, Senator Freddie Webb, I think, is in his 70s. And yet, diba, the physique, when we see him, uh, is far more better than most of us here. Because he's still very active. Diba? From the time he was an athlete, until the time he retired, until he was part of uh, the Senate, until, uh, diba? until now, he still follows that uh, regimen or routine. Maybe not as extensive, but it's still there. So it's very important. Okay? Ayaw nating, diba? We see athletes who are out of shape just a few years after their careers. Okay? So by teaching good exercise habits, knowing, knowing, uh, letting, them, letting them know that it's hard work, okay, we want them to really have a good life even after coaching them. Okay. The mental aspect of sports is often undervalued. Ito, again, yung nga, yung case in point, di ba? When we have players who are good but are not uh, adept mentally, minsan nasasayangan tayo. And we now have sports psychologists who could really help. Okay, so hindi na, kumbaga before, kasi there's a negative notion when you say, I need the, the help of, of a psychologist. Pero now, it's really part of elite coaching already, of elite teams, di ba? Having their own sports psychologist. In order to get the best performance out of your players, both as individuals and as components of the larger team, you cannot ignore the mental aspects of the game. Um, di ba, we see players who really either succumb to pressure or really excel during tense moments. Di ba? I've, kumaga, we tell them, I've, I've seen you hit that shot thousands of times. Pero pagdating sa laro, bakit hindi ka makashoot? Di ba? So it's all part of the mental aspect of your game. Prepare them. I don't know how. Uh, there will be Diba? If you have a sports psychologist, there will be different approaches. Pero as a coach, without the help of a sports psychologist, maybe the best approach is to build their confidence. To build their confidence so that they will still be successful in pressure-packed moments during the game. So a confident player is far more likely to succeed than a, than a player or than a person who does not have that confidence. So I don't know if, uh, this is Coach Bobe Park. He's part of the FEU program for football. Uh, and they have a winning program. They've won 10 straight UAAP Juniors Football Championship. 10 straight. Okay, so I'm sure they've, ha they've had a lot of bumps along the way. But yet, diba? Nakailang cycle na yun ng player. So, so we, we cannot just say na magagaling kasi yung player. Eh. So baka nakatatlong cycle na yun eh. And, and yet, it's a winning program. So what is his take on the role of a coach? Uh, for me, the most important role as a coach is psychology. Uh, we give them mental strong or give them motivation. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Bobe. So nakakatawa na si Coach Bobe. He's Korean. So para kay Coach Bobe, mental strong ang importante. So we have to be strong mentally. Diba? So, how do we apply that? We give them confidence. Diba? We give them confidence na siguro to, to let them know na even if you make mistakes in these situations, okay lang if you fail. Or put them in situations like that. Diba? Sanayin natin na may pressure pa. So, it doesn't have to be with fans every time. The, the, the drills you do Okay, by giving them consequences, 
or pressure pack yung kailangan kahit pa paano may kaba para masanay sila kapag nanonood na uh, libo-libo na ang nanonood sa kanila. So, thank you very much, Coach Bobe. And again, congratulations for winning your 10th straight UAP Juniors Football Championship. Okay. Ito, sometimes we forget eh. Uh, lalo na sa pro levels because uh, syempre pressure pack. It's our livelihood. Diba? Pag hindi tayo manalo, baka tanggalin tayo. But always remember that you are coaching a game. Diba? Go back to your roots. Yourself. As an athlete. Diba? Sanay tayo. When we were younger, when we were growing up, laro-laro lang tayo sa kalye, under the sun, tanghaling tapat, wearing our slippers and we were enjoying whether we win or lose enjoy tayo so maybe it's good to reflect to stop to relax a moment so regardless of the level at which you are coaching remember that it is still a game okay and we will not always win and yet if we lose okay is it a failure already uh Ito, a classic example I have of this is uh, an NBA coach who I idolize a lot. Okay? Jerry Sloan never won a championship in the NBA. I think he coached for more than 20 years with the Utah Jazz. He never won a championship. Will you say that he is not a good coach? I don't think so. Well, because it's I mean, I mean it's, I mean it's very important to win, but the consistency of competing was there. Okay, so it's not always about championships, guys. There are other many goals that you should have or that you should remember, so that even if you don't win the championship, you can still call it a successful season. Akonari, you're coaching an individual player. Uh, for example, golf. Okay? Ang handicap, let's say, ng bata is 10. Okay? Lumaban siya sa isang tournament. Uh, he shot a par. Diba? He did not win the championship. And yet, it's a mini goal. It's something worth celebrating. Okay? Because he really improved a lot from what he was expected to what he really achieved that time. If the coach is not having fun, then the players likely will not be having fun either. Okay, so they will annoy, they will pattern their behavior based on how you project yourself. Kung nakikita lang laging mainit ulo mo, lagi kang masungit, most likely, ganun din yung ibabalik nila sa iyo. At the same time, if they see you enjoying, hindi naman kailangan tawa ng tawa lagi ah. Okay, pero masaya din yun may tawanan kahit pa paano. But if they see you enjoying, okay, they will imbibe this eh. And ibabalik nila sa iyo. Okay, mag enjoy din sila. And again, uh, snowball effect na yan eh. If you're having fun, you get their buy-in of the system that you want, and winning will just happen. Okay, so uh, for the last Ano, uh, importance of coaches, be the best coach you can be. It's, we always hear this, do your best, just do your best. Diba? Be the best coach you can be. Good coaches take many different forms. Diba? We can say a good coach is someone who has won multiple championships. That's correct. But on the other hand, a good coach is someone who's really developed uh, his players to be very responsible individuals. Okay din yun. So, hindi lang siya winning lang. Even if you don't win, but you develop people to be better persons, to be better citizens, okay, that is equally as important or baka even better. So, trust me, guys. Trust me. As long as you have these non-negotiables, as long as you uh, show these characteristics, Okay, winning, whether it comes or not, okay, uh, of course, it's something that we want, but I assure you, you will still be good coaches, even if you don't win championships. 
No coach is perfect. We all know this. And each one will make many mistakes along the way. The key is to learn from your mistakes and continually strive to become the best coach you can be and instill good values to all your players. Yeah. We all know this. We always hear this. Paulit ulit. Paulit ulit. Sana it's about time that we really practice it. It's not easy. It's not easy. But as long as we continually do it, it will be part of our system and it will be second nature. So we have another coach here, so Coach Charles Chu, on a stake uh, as a coach. So. I'd say the most important role of a coach is to develop people, make players have better values, better characters, and you know, at the same time, teaching them about life. Thank you very much, Coach Charles. Yeah. Uh, it's to develop people, make players have better values, okay, and teach them about life. Okay. Uh, gaya ng sinasabi natin kanina, di ba? even after they play for you, okay, if you teach them something, maybe just one aspect of their life that they can apply after playing for you. Diba? you will be a successful coach. You will be a successful coach, a mentor, a father figure. And I know a lot of the coaches out here diba, have built relationships with their players throughout the years because they've taught them something more valuable than just winning a game. Diba? It's being better people. It's being better person. So thank you very much, Coach Charles. So in conclusion, uh, I have here two quotations from two coaches that I admire. These are very veteran coaches, legends. Okay, the first one is Gordy Gillespie. Okay, so he said that great coaches are great humanitarians. They really care for the athlete as people first and athlete second. This is paramount in gaining respect. Okay, so very important, people first and athlete second. Ang nangyayari, lalo na ngayon, because it's really, be, uh, it's really getting really competitive, nagiging athletes first. Nagiging commodity na ang mga bata, which shouldn't be the case, pero nangyayari. Di ba, Nag binibili ko yung player from another organization, binabayaran ko yung organization na nagbenta. Is that the right way of, of dealing with these kids. Lagi nating tandaan, tao rin yan. Tao muna sila. Diba? Then we treat them accordingly as an athlete, as a student, etc., etc. Okay, so uh, I know there's a lot of pressure, diba? In the, in the world we now live in. Sometimes the end goal is just to win. Okay, that's why we forget this. Sometimes we treat athletes as commodities. Okay. Parang goods na lang sila, pinagpapasapasahan uh, for a value. Okay. The next is from Coach John Wooden. Good coaching is about leadership and instilling respect in your players. Dictators lead through fear, good coaches do not. So again, leadership and instilling respect. How will you instill respect? If you show them respect, okay, by showing them respect, they will just reciprocate this and do the same to you. Pwedeng hindi mangyari sa simula. Pwedeng hindi agad-agad mangyayari yun. But if we show that to them consistently, continually, okay, continuously, babalik sa atin yun. Okay? So, if you will notice, for both quotations, from these two legend coaches, especially I think most of you know John Wooden, you never saw or you never read anything about X's and O's or about championships. They did not say anything about a good coach should win a championship every time. I never saw it. I'm sure you didn't see it as well. Pero ano yung napansin nyo sa mga quotations, sa mga sinabi nila on what coaching is? 
it's really the relationship with the players. It's our humanitarian side as coaches on how we deal with athletes. The respect we give them. Diba? Hindi sila commodities. Hindi sila bayaran. Diba? They are human beings that need our guidance from uh, instilling good values all the way to the skills that they need in that particular sport, whether individual or team. Okay, so to end to end this uh, uh, short talk this morning, I I forgot one more that's very important as well. Okay, of course we instill these values. I I have these uh, non-negotiables. Okay, but sometimes we always only apply this when everything fails. But it should always be at the beginning and end of everything that we do with our athletes. And that is to pray. Diba? We always need to pray, guys. Diba? It's part of it. Hindi lang tayo magdadasal kung natatalo tayo. Hindi lang tayo dapat magdasal kung nahihirapan tayo. Prayer should be part of our lives. Um, whether we're living comfortably or having a hard time. Okay, so with that, again, these are just the basics. There's a lot out there. Uh, it just supplements, I guess, a lot of you have been attending webinars in this time of pandemic. It just supplements, siguro, uh, the other webinars that you have attended. Ako, ang mas gusto ko going back to basics. Eh. Let's leave the X's and O's to the Ima Sistema to the other coaches. Okay, so... Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Um, I guess if you have uh, questions, you can shoot them now. Thank you. Thank you, Coach JM. No, uh, such a great talk and a lot of points really na na pick up natin, especially dun sa minimum competencies. I com competencies needed. Ano, magandang uh, Reminder lang for everyone, ano, na for you to be a coach, really, it's uh, una una. Do you have the competencies needed, no, to start it off? Ang gandang uh, point lang yon, Coach JM. Yeah. Uh, do sa mga pinoint out mong competencies, Coach JM. Um, uh, you well in in general, really, uh, all all those competencies needed, it has to be glued somewhat by communication skills, no? Do, do you agree with that? Yes, yes. I mean, kasi again, uh, by communicating to them, diba, it will, everything will follow eh. Again, tama ka coach, the lack of communication is sometimes the root of all our ano eh, mishaps or mistakes eh, diba? Minsan, sinasabi natin, kahit saan, sa school, sa corporate, miskom lang miskom. Diba? Parang, May sinasabi ka, hindi naintindihan, or may sinasabi, hindi ka nakikinig. So very important, thank you very much, Coach Potit. Communication is part of everything that we will do as coaches. Whether, ano yan, whether okay. verbal, whether written, or whether through our actions, everything is part of communication. For the coaches, kasi I'm sure, I mean, marami tayong alam, but it's the uh, crucial part really is how uh, to uh, transfer what you know to the players and make them understand. So, siguro ang question, Coach Jem, I'll start off the questions, no? Blago yeah. yung mga iba. What if, what if you're a person na medyo mahina ang communication skills just because maybe of, uh, uh, siguro yung kinalakihan kasi, um, I'm sure yung iba very intimidated, no? Especially coming from the provinces, no? Libliban, baka nung elementary, Pati English teacher nga nila, bali-baliko rin ang English eh. No? So, how would one go about, no? eh, I mean, how, how does one uh, transcend that uh, obstacle of not really being a good communicator, pero maraming alam eh. But as a coach, how can he effectively, or is there a way around it, uh, being uh, not a good communicator? Thank you for the question, Coach Putit. Number one siguro, Let's say I'm a coach who's not really a good communicator. I ask myself, why did I become a coach? 
Siguro ask ourselves, bakit tayo naging coach? Okay, pero let's say, nandyan na, dumating na, we're coaches and we're not good, good communicators. Okay, one thing that you could do is maybe start off by communicating with your players individually. Okay, communicating with your players individually. If you're too shy to address people in a group, minsan kailangan isa-isa. Second, siguro, ako, what I would do, sa simula pa lang, I would already tell my team that I really have a hard time communicating verbally for them to understand me right away. Kasi minsan, baka nahiya. Kunwari, nahiya ako, ay hindi ako, medyo hirap ako magsalita eh. But we hide it. We keep it to ourselves. So what will the, our players think of us? Medyo, hindi ko naintindihan sa coach. O si coach, bakit ganito? But at the onset, if we tell them na I have problems uh, talking or communicating, but help me out, hope you're with me in this, I think it will eventually improve. It takes a lot of guts kasi minsan nahiya tayo. Ang Pinoy, generally torpe yan eh. But if we, alam ko mahirap, hindi ganun kadali, no? But if we tell them right away that ito yung mga limitations ko, they, I think they will understand and really appreciate you even more. Thank you, Coach. Maganda yun. You. No, um, if you are somewhat uh, uh, kulang sa kumpiyansa, kausapin ng malaking grupo, start off with ano, no, paisa-isa, just, yes. to let, no, just to let your players know your heart also. No? Ang ganda yun, Coach JM. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. If there are any, any other questions sa uh, mga or clarifications or ano yeah katulad doon ako ganoon no uh, i'm asking some questions uh, go ahead no either through the chat or just unmute yourselves kung gusto niyo magtanong kasi sa susunod na panahon hindi na libre si coach JM ngayon libre oh <laughs> di kayo sisingilin yeah. yan mahal per hour thank you to all uh, uh, i see a lot of i see a lot of ano here friends here so who joined us this morning uh, thank you very much, uh, si Mr. Kuya, si Mia Samson, Mike Cabardo, Noel, Brother Toti, salamat din, and all the other coaches. Uh, thank you. So kung may tanong kayo, yes, I think it's a good, this is a very good venue for us, uh, I guess, siguro, we can open the floor to other coaches to give in their answers as well. Uh, and we can learn from each other in this particular forum. Coach Jay, may tanong dito. May question dito. May tanong dito. Uh, paano ka daw nag-start? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Ayan, ito. Yeah, paano ka daw uh, yun, nag-start mag-coach? Paano ka daw nag-start mag-coach? Okay. Uh, sports has been a passion of mine ever since I was, uh, I, I was a kid. Then, of course, we all had dreams of making... Uh, sports our careers as athletes muna. But then we realize along the way na kulang pala tayo to be uh, athletes in a particular profession. Then the next thing that, I, that came to mind for me was coaching. So it's funny, I was in a corporate setting before. Then there was back in 99, I think, Tex Winter, the father of the triangle offense, came to the Philippines to have a coaching seminar. Nagtatrabaho pa ako noon. So ang ginawa ko, nag-enroll ako doon. I paid for my own tuition for that uh, seminar. Then nag-leave ako sa office, I think, for three days. Then I was there. I, I was fortunate enough to uh, get to know coaches. Specifically si Coach Nash. Kasi nakaka-intimidate yung ibe. Sila Coach Tim Cohn. Lahat ng mga PBA coaches nandun. Tapos nakita ko si Coach Nash. Sabi ko, eto mukhang ano to. Nakilala ko na to dati. Pero hindi niya ako kilala. Pero nakilala ko na to dati. So tinabihan ko si Coach Nash Rosella dun sa camp na yun. So eh, makulit naman si Coach Nash. Very accommodating. Mabait. So nagkakilala kami. Nagpalitan kami ng number. Yun yung importante. Nagpalitan kami ng number. Then tapos na tapos na yung seminar. Then I went back to my, my corporate life. Then I think a couple of months after Coach Nash was elevated as the head coach of Batangas Blades in the NBA. Uh, 
So I think he needed an assistant that time. Then he asked me uh, if I wanted to be an assistant coach for him together with Coach Eric Gonzalez. So talagang uh, walang isip-isip. I filed my resignation. Uh, I was in Nike Philippines back then. I filed my resignation and uh, went into coaching. That's how it started. Then uh, I applied in different positions na after that in Ateneo, the high school team. Uh, so since then, I've been coaching for 21 years. And that moment with Coach Nash in that text winter seminar siguro really started me into coaching. Siguro another factor, sorry, if I may add, it's BJ Manalo who's also listening. BJ Manalo was my student before when I was teaching in the Ateneo. Uh, then, so interested na ako into coaching. Back then, BJ was in third year high school playing for the UAAP juniors team. Then he told me about this uh, coaching seminar of Bobby Knight back then. See, Bobby Knight was, was a very popular coach, a very good coach. So I, what I did, nag-dial up ako. Dial up pa noon, wala pang wifi. Nag-dial up ako sa internet. Then I downloaded some material from Bobby Knight and I ordered videos and some reading materials from Bobby Knight. And it was BJ Manalo who introduced me to, na, Coach Pede, if you want to learn, puntahan mo to, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's funny because Tsugoro, two of the people who, really, who influenced me as well to go into coaching are, are present here in Coach Nash and uh, Coach BJ Manalo. So... Yon. So and the rest is history. Uh, I, so I coach now in the high school level, but I also have my corporate job. So kumbaga, the passion for coaching should always be there for me, regardless of the level, whether professional, whether uh, youth. Uh, it's something that I really look forward to. Eh. Minsan tinatamad ako magpunta sa trabaho, pero pag may practice, excited ka. It's different. It's different. <laughs> Uh, there's another question here from so, from Alan Padorno. Kailangan ba alam mo ang sport to coach the sport? I think it's one of the requirements. Kasi di ba kung babalik tayo sa presentation, importante yung demonstration. Di ba? So let's say, I want to coach tennis, pero hindi ako marunong humawak ng raketa. How can we be credible? Di ba? So we have to be credible as well, uh, to be, to be uh, listened to. So I think regarding the coach of uh, Sir Alan Pador here, yes, at least you have to know something about the sport for you to coach the sport. Para yung ituturo mo sa, yung ituturo mo sa mga bata, importante na kailangan mo rin, na, na alam mo rin gawin. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to look pretty. Kasi di ba, minsan out of shape na tayo, pero dapat alam mo rin gawin eh. So, I, yeah, I think very important that you should know the, the sport as well. Thank you, Alan. Um, another question, Coach JM, is uh, um, yung players nila in practices they get the, I mean, they, they, they're they able to play well in the practices yes. nila, no? And able to execute. Pero pagdating sa sa game, medyo hindi daw nila mag-get. <coughs> o hindi nila, it, it is not evident na nakukuha nila whatever they get sa practice, translating into the games. They don't have any assistant coaches, no sports psychologist. What would he be able to, uh, ano kayo mga ideas para matulungan mag-transcend yung players from practices that, with that kind of limitation? Okay, thank you, Coach. I guess this is a concern for a lot of us, di ba? Kasi syempre, pag nasa pro level ka, they're used to the exposure of having people watch them. They have the compliment of the assistant coaches. For the lower level, especially in the youth levels, uh, siguro one thing is to get them used to dealing with pressure. How? It doesn't always have to be game situations. In simple drills that you do, okay, put some pressure by having a reward system after putting time limits to your drills para lang masanay sila na doing things na may kaba. 
Uh, I think that's that's one of the approaches I do at at, at uh, the high school level that I coach is to really have a reward system. Hindi naman mamibigay ka ng sapatos or anything, no? Have a reward system or in uh, by beating this time or by out uh, outperforming the others in a particular drill, uh, you get a break. The others don't. Okay, so put put some semblance of uh, pressure in the drills that you apply. Yung kailangan masanay sila na may kaba para pagdating sa actual, they will be kahit papano mentally tough. I'm not saying that it's the only way, but I think it's one of the ways wherein we can prepare. It's just like in a school setting. In a school setting, let's say you're preparing for uh, an exam. If you do mock exams or mock drills, di ba? Sasagot ka. Tapos you time yourselves. Dapat in 40 minutes matapos ko to dahil yung exam namin is 40 minutes. So kailangan masanay ka sa ganong situation. May kaba, may, may, may oras, may time limit. Para when you get to the actual, you're kind of used to it. Sabi nga nila, di ba? It's okay to be nervous. Maganda yung kinakabahan ka. That means, okay, your mind is telling you that you have to prepare. Minsan hindi maganda yung walang kabay. Okay, so yun. Uh, in the little things that you do with your drills, put pressure, put time limits, ganyan. Maybe the other coaches have answers as well to help uh, people prepare mentally. Yeah. Um... Maraming tanong, ano, but uh, I think we just have like 10 more minutes. But uh, how do you handle daw players na unselfish, disrespectful players? Oh, mga may hugot to, ah. And then, <laughs> siguro katabi nyo is, um, at tapos ka, katugtong na lang din nito is again from uh, Alan, Coach Alan Pador from the US. US, yan. Um, oh, kung hindi daw rin yung respeto ng uh, young Kailangan din natin... Ah, now he's just saying, paano daw i-handle also players? How do you handle knowing your players without going overboard in uh, disrespecting their privacy? So, disrespectful players, how to handle them, and then how to handle okay. getting to know the players without uh, going overboard. Okay, thank you, Coach. I guess for disrespectful players, we ask ourselves, eh, diba? sometimes... Even in our family setup, as parents, as children, there have been instances, siguro kahit minsan, wherein na disrespect, na disrespect tayo maybe ng anak natin, or we disrespected our parents or tita or whoever. Nangyayari yan. So, punta tayo sa ganong setup. How do we deal with it? Let's say your kid, your child disrespected you. How will you handle it? It will vary. It will be different. Pero I guess the, the approach is kung paano mo tatratuhin siguro ang sarili mong anak who disrespects you, maybe that's a good way to handle your own teams. Okay? Huwag naman yung papadapain, papaluin ng sinturon siguro. Hindi na uso ngayon yun eh. Diba? Pero pangaralan lang natin. Ako siguro the easiest and most effective way is to talk to them. Pull them aside. We just be honest. We tell them, let's say, uh, Junior, medyo hindi maganda, medyo nasaktan ako doon, sana wag mo na ulitin. Uh, hindi madali eh. Hindi madali because sometimes what we teach as coaches is different from what is happening in their household eh. Diba? Minsan taliwas yung nangyayari sa bahay doon sa gusto natin mangyari. Pero siguro, the best we could do really is to be patient Wag lang tayong magsawa, magturo. Okay? And hopefully, there will be realizations afterward from the, from the athlete or from the kid na tama pala yung sinasabi ni coach. Yun lang siguro. Let's not stop. And hopefully, they realize uh, that we're just helping them. We just want them to be better persons. Siguro yung, kay, yung isang, ano naman, yung data pri yung privacy, again, that's why, going back to what Coach Potid said earlier, communication is very important. Kasi there are boundaries, there are limitations. Minsan, masyado na tayong goody-goody uh, or too close for comfort, ika nga nila. Too close for comfort that we 
uh, step on the bounds of the private, the private life of that uh, kid. Very important to establish the professional level of our, of our relationship first with our athletes. Okay, then the personal, it will vary depending on how open they will be also. So yun lang siguro. Uh, Mag-ingat lang tayo, mag-ingat lang tayo. But start off professionally, even with teachers in a school setup. Diba? Professional lang, teacher-student or coach-athlete relationship. Then eventually we get them, we get to know them personally. Uh, but yet, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Thank you, Coach uh, JM. No? I know yes. a lot of, uh, of our coaches meron pa mga iniisip yung tanong but we don't have the time. Uh, would you be able to maybe share an, uh, a way to, to get in touch with you and uh, kahit i-chat sa chat box na lang dito for everyone, an email address or a messenger account, I don't know. We just choose kung mode of uh, communication with our coaches now who would want to yeah. reach out to you. No? Yeah, uh, um, you can just uh, send some of your questions on Twitter. Twitter na lang. Eh, kung, kung may Twitter kayo. O Facebook. Facebook, JM Pilares. You can, you can add me. Siguro, last na lang, Coach Potit. Meron kasi dito eh. Oh, maganda, it. maganda nga. Sige, go ahead. Meron pa rin bang parents na nakikialam with how you coach during a game? Yes. Thank you for the question. It happens. Sa tingin ko, sa lahat ng levels, uh, parents... Kahit pro eh. Kahit, I think kahit pro, parents will really get into, uh, try to be more than just parents. Siguro, for me, the best way to handle those or how I've been doing it, no? Before the start of every campaign, of every season, I have a parents meeting. So siguro, even at the pro level, college level, it's good to have a parents meeting. We're in... I give, the, I set the expectations of what I demand from the players, from and from the parents as well. So I tell them, shampre in a very cordial manner, in a very nice way, that for them to leave the coaching up to me. And they tell them that sometimes they will disagree with what I do. Of course, all parents would want their kids to play, pero hindi naman in a basketball team, for example, of 12 or 15 players, lima lang naman ang pwede maglaro at a time. And unlike, un, unless ano yan, yung mga SBP Milo best na 10-10-10, medyo wala nang ganong format masyado, most likely, they will not have equal playing times. Eh. So, it's very important that I set the expectations at the beginning of each campaign para alam na nila. Okay? And then, I also create a chat group among parents. So instead of them, for example, bashing me, okay, we have a very, kumbaga, a group, a conversation within our team with parents na ano naman, very civil interaction. So kasi kahit pa paano naman, sometimes you also learn from them. Eh? Let's not take that away. And as parents, I know si Coach Potit and the others here are also parents of ano eh, athletes na bata. And sometimes, di ba, minsan gusto nating gusto nyo makialam, pero dahil coaches tayo, mas alam natin na we leave the coaching up to the coach, whether we like the system that they're doing or not. So, yun. Mahirap, hindi ganun kadaling sagutin, pero ako yun, at least, may expectations na nakaset each time we enter a season. Thank you. Yeah, I think madali siya bihin mahirap gawin ano but uh, siguro to make it more complicated parents who actually finance the program pa no tas yung pa yung makikialam but uh, that deserves another talk <laughs> yan that deserves a whole new hour no pag-usapan yang problema ngayan but uh, again coach JM if you would mind lang no type in yung email address na minention mo kanina sa chat box so that everyone can yeah. see and uh, thank you for your time i know uh if you don't know, no, uh, the past two weeks, Coach JM was really in depth, no, sa pag uh, prepare ng talk niya ang galing, no, and then grabi yung lineup ng mga speaker niya within the <laughs> okay, no. Uh, so magandang uh, pahirap pa niya, no, magandang uh, sundan niya ni Coach Nash sa May, sa May 25. Coach Nash will be our speaker 10 a.m. 
And on May 29, 1 p.m., ha, alauna ng hapon, Coach Koy Banal talking about defensive pressure. So from uh, from our hearts, from our minds, our spirits, now we go to uh, X and O's naman no, next week. So this would be also a, a great uh, a great time with other coaches. But Coach JM, thank you for sharing your time and your, thank you very much. your knowledge thank you very much. No, to us. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who joined, guys. Okay. Keep safe, guys. Keep safe. Thank you, Coach JM. Uh, to everyone else, thank you for your time. No, uh, sticking with us. Uh, it's 11:13. Ganda ng uh, ng uh, time natin together. Uh, again, don't uh, miss our next series next week, May 25, 10 a.m. Hey, Coach Nash, uh, talking about a lot of basketball wisdom. And then on May 29, 1 p.m., alauna ng hapon, Coach Koy Banal, okay, from the States, direct from the States, he will be talking to us about defensive pressure. So maganda ang lineup natin next week. And then the week after, marami, maraming uh, to uh, help you guys and everything. I think, no, to, to end the, this talk, really, it's there is no better time to prepare to be a great coach than today, no, than now, dito sa lockdown. Because here you you'll be able you'll be able really to live out whatever you want to share with your players in the future. Pag na, pag, uh, when the time comes na you're able to meet your players, mapagmamalaki mo talaga taas noo ka na masasabi mo sa players mo na eto mga tinuturo ko isinabuhay ko during the lockdown and I survived and I'm successful right now and, and I'm still encouraged. No, so again to all the coaches. No, God bless and uh, stay safe and try to prepare being the coach that you want to be when the lockdown closes. God bless. Thank you. And, uh,